So the question was, what is the difference between jihad and excessiveness or tatarruf? And he said that as for jihad, as it is well known, it is a legislated requirement. It is a duty in Islam, an Islamic duty. Sometimes it is a duty which is what we call fard kifaya, something which is required upon certain individuals. And then he said, sometimes it is fardun ayn. It is something which is required on every single individual. Everyone must do it. Okay? And he said, so for example, if a people prevent us from conveying the Islamic message, then it is permissible for us to fight such people. And he said, or if people are, being, are coming and oppressing us or transgressing against us, then it is permissible for, to, for us to repel that through self-defense. And this would also be an example of jihad, the legislated jihad. So jihad is something which is legislated and founded in the Islamic principles and teachings. He said, as for a tatarruf, then it has not been mentioned in Islam except with dispraise or except being put down or except as something which is rejected and disliked. And he says, what is meant by a tatarruf is going beyond the bounds and exceeding the limits. And he said, so a tatarruf is going beyond the sunnah and going beyond the Islamic regulations. And he said, this is the major difference between Jihad, which is something which is legislated, and at the tarruf, which is something which is not only not legislated, but is something which has been mentioned with dispraise and put down and rejected. فضيلة الشيخ علي بن عبد الحميد الحلبي هل تعتقدون أن الجهاد في سبيل الله خروج عن الجادة الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله ما بعد أقول أولا جزى الله الأخ السائل خيرا على هذا السؤال حتى لا يبقى في نفسه شيء من الإشكال وفي الوقت نفسه مثل هذا السؤال يدفعني بمرارة أن أقول إن لغة العلم لا يزال فيها حلقة مفقودة تجعلنا لا نفرق بين البحث العلمي المدلل بالحجج الشرعية وبين النظر العاطفي الذي يبنى على ردود الأفعال كما ذكرنا ذلك إشارة وكما نراه عيانا فالجهاد كما تفضل صاحب الفضيلة الشيخ سليم الهلالي قبل قليل ركن مهم وواجب لازم سماه النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ذروة سنام الإسلام ومع ذلك فنحن لا نتجاوز به قدره ففي بعض روايات حديث بني الإسلام على خمس قام أحد التابعين يسأل الراوي قال والجهاد لأنه لم يذكر إلا خمسة ولم يذكر منها الجهاد قال والجهاد قال الجهاد حق لكن هكذا قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم انظروا العاطفة وقارنوها بالعلم تفوز وتنجو دنيا وأخرى الجهاد له شروطه وله أركانه وأقسامه الجهاد له عدته وعدده وعدده عندما قال الله تعالى وأعد لهم ما استطعتم من قوة قالها لفئة مؤمنة أسلست قيادتها لله واستقامت على أمر الله وكانت مؤهلة لهذا الخطاب ولهذا التوجيه من ذلك جوابا مباشرا على الأخ السائل أن الجهاد قسمان جهاد دفع وجهاد طلب جهاد الطلب كفائي الفرض وجهاد الدفع عيني الفرض فلو كان هذا الجهاد 
الذي عليه إشكال اليوم بحيث نرى نحن بعض صوره المدعاة خروجا عن الجادة بينما يرى الأخ السائل أو غيره أنه جهاد نقول فإذا كان هذا هو الجهاد المطلوب عينيا في الشرع فما الذي يجلسك أخي السائل أو غيرك عن القعود عن الجهاد الذي تنكر على غيرك أنه لا يراه جهادا لأنه ليس هو الجهاد الشرعي المطلوب في دين الله والذي لا يفتي به إلا خاصة أهل العلم أمناء الدين وحملة الشريعة لا يرجع الأمر إلى أنصاف المتعلمين ولا أشباه المثقفين الذين يثورون الناس في حماساتهم ثم يوقعونهم في بئر من الفتن ومستنقع من المحن لا يخرجون منه إلا أن يشاء الله الجهاد في سبيل الله أصل من أصول الشرع وأساس من أسسه لكن إذا وضعناه في إطاره وإذا وضعناه في دائرته وإذا لم نخرج به عن حكمه وحده أما إذا فعلنا فيه شيئا من ذلك قليلا أو كثيرا فإن الانحراف واقع والخروج عن الجادة حتم ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله طيب لو سمحت يعني ردد السؤال مرة ثانية طيب the questioner asks do we deem that jihad in the way of Allah is going outside of the true Islam or the true, uh, the true way the shaykh he began by saying may Allah reward the questioner who asked this question in order to arrive at the truth and to understand the correct ma- the, or to come to the correct understanding in this matter And he said that jihad is no doubt an important pillar and a requirement in Islam. And he said, in fact, in some of the narrations of the hadith which says Islam is built upon five pillars, we read that some of the narrators or some of the people who heard this hadith or this hadith was narrated to them, they would say, for example, and where is the mention of jihad or how come jihad has not been mentioned? And so the narrator would respond to them and say, No doubt, jihad is true. It is a part of Islam. But in this way, our Messenger ﷺ has narrated or mentioned the hadith. So we don't mention jihad as part of the hadith because this is what the Prophet ﷺ said. Not because it's not true or it's not a part of Islam. And he says that jihad has its types and its kinds and its forms. And he says that when the ayah was mentioned about preparing whatever you can prepare of strength against them he says that it refers to an Islamic nation which has its leaders and it has its uh, boundaries and it has all those things which make it an Islamic nation and he said that jihad is of two types jihad of defa the jihad of defense defending repelling the enemy and jihad of talab the one which is an offensive And he said that this jihad al dafa is aini, that when Muslims are transgressed against and their boundaries are crossed by an outside enemy who wants aggression, then they are all encouraged and required to defend themselves and to repel this enemy. And he said that if the one asks that about jihad and he considers something to be a lawful or legislated jihad, then he said, who is the one or who are the ones? who will lead you to come to this conclusion, to make you reach this understanding. He says it is the scholars, it is the people of knowledge, it is those who know. They are the ones who will determine if it is actually in reality a lawful and legislated jihad in the way of Allah. 
And he said that jihad is a fundamental, a principle. It's an aspect of our religion, no doubt. But we must stay within the boundaries and the regulations which have been set forth to determine it and to apply it. And he said that if we go outside of these boundaries and exceed the bounds, then we end up falling into something which is wrong. And, which is, and then he, and he asked, basically he said, Allah al-Musta'an, and he sought refuge. السؤال الأخير والأسئلة كثيرة والوقت قد ضاق يدعي بعض الجهات تدعي بعض الجهات الإعلامية غير الإسلامية بأن المدارس التابعة للسلفيين تعلم شباب الأمة التطرف كيف نرد على هذا نقول هذا خلاف الواقع وهذا من الظلم وال والافتراء على المنهج السلفي حين المنهج السلفي والمدرسة السلفية التي تنتمي إلى الكتاب والسنة وفهم سلف السلف الصالح وتنتمي إلى إمتها أعلام هذا العصر من باز والألباني وابن العثيمين تبرأ إلى الله من هذا من هذه الافتراءات وهذه الندوة وغيرها من الندوات وغيرها من المؤلفات وغيرها من الفتاوى والمحاضرات والدروس لا تدل دلالة واضحة لكل ذي بصر وبصيرة أن هذا أن واقع الدعوة السلفية خلاف ما يفترى عليها وترمى به لا شك أن هناك بعض الفئات المتطرفة المنتمية للسلفية ظلما وزورا كبعض الجماعات القتالية في الجزائر وغيرها تفعل تقوم بأعمال إرهابية باسم السلفية وهذا وهذا لا يعني السلفية في شيء فالسلفية تبرأ إلى الله من الإرهاب ومن قتل الأطفال ومن قتل الآمنين ومن قتل النساء ومن القتل العشوائي وإنما السلفية تؤمن كما تفضل أصحاب الفضيلة بالجهاد الشرعي المنضبط القائم على الكتاب والسنة ومنهج سلف الأمة وهذا هو واقع الدعوة السلفية الدعوة السلفية دعوة ربانية تربوية تعتمد مبدأ التصفية والتربية ولا تنكر الجهاد خصوصا الجهاد الذي بينه المشايخ حفظهم الله أما الحماسات الفارغة والتثوير ودعوى الخروج فهذا تبرأ إلى الله منه لأنه خلاف منهج السلف الصالح هذا ونشكر الإخوة الحضور جزاهم الله خيرا كما نشكر المشايخ المشاركين في هذه الندوة وجزى الله الجميع خيرا وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وآله وسلم The last question and the answer to the last question Abu Anas he said that the question put forth the kufar they claim that the Muslims the Salafi people are teaching at tataruf and they're teaching al-Irhab, terrorism and extremism. They're teaching this in the schools that are the schools of the Salafis. This is one of their claims. How do we refute that and repel that claim? The Sheikh, he went on to say that that claim is in contradiction to the reality of what we're living. That claim is oppression and it is a lie. The minhaj of the Salafi people and what they teach in their schools and institutions is that they call the people to the book of Allah and to the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam according to the understanding according to the understanding of the righteous predecessors of this ummah. We are upon what? 
the recent contemporary ulama of Rabbaniyun to this da'wah were upon and what they called to and what they taught and what they wrote about as Shaykh Al-Imam Al-Albani as Shaykh Ibn Baz and as Shaykh Ibn Uthaymeen Rahimahumullah Ta'ala Jami'a and we as Salafi people we free ourselves from such a claim ever being true and one of the clearest evidences and proofs that dispel this lie and this oppression is the fact that this symposium is addressing the issue in very clear and in very certain terms. In addition to that, we add that the books that have been written in the issue, the lectures have been, have been given by the Salafi people, the lessons and the durus that have been given, the Islamic verdicts and fatawa that have been given by the ulama of this da'wah and the people who are part of this da'wah. All of that is more than enough and it's more than sufficient for the one who Allah has blessed with the ability to see and the ability to be fair and just to come to know that the Dawah to Salafiyah is in opposition to this concept that the Salafi Madaris schools and institutions are teaching the Tataruf and are teaching the terrorism as they define it and understand it. The Sheikh, he went on to say what there is no doubt about and we do not try to escape from this is that there are some people who are extreme, they are extremists and they connect themselves to a Salafiya. This is a fact. Like some of the groups that are present in Al Jazair, in Al Jazair, Jazair, Algeria. There are certain groups who are extreme in Algeria and they claim a connection to a Salafi. And this is an example that the Sheikh mentioned there. It's just an example. He said, the Salafi and the Dawah of the true Salafi has nothing to do with them and, it has no, and they have nothing to do with the Dawah or that claim. The concept and the idea of killing indiscriminately children and women the killing that is Ashwa'i is just confusion and it's indiscriminate, kill any and everyone. This has nothing to do with our religion. But the jihad that is legislated in the religion, that has its rules and regulations, that is supported and commanded to and called to in the Kitab and the Sunnah with the proper minhaj, this is our dawah and this is what we call to. And this is the da'wah that is Rabbani, and it is the da'wah of the ulama who are the Rabbaniyin. We call to a tasfiyah wa tarbiya, the Salafi people, these madrasas, and the people who are calling and claiming a Salafiyah, they call the people to a tasfiyah, purifying what has been polluted in the religion, and they call them to a tarbiya, readdressing the way we're going about doing things to do the things the proper way. We do not reject the jihad that has been explained by the mashaykh here in this symposium. The jihad that has been articulated by them, which is a jihad that is comprehensive, a jihad that has its rules and regulations. We do not make the nafi of that jihad. We support that jihad. As for what the people call jihad, when they rebel against the rulers and they do what is against the religion, this we separate ourselves from it and we disassociate ourselves from it. So that's the answer as it relates to that lie and that oppression. After that, the Sheikh Abu Anas, he said, we would like to extend our appreciation and our thanks to all of the brothers and the sisters who are present right now we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept it from you and to accept it from us. And with that, we're going to bring today's, really it's the second symposium to a close. And tomorrow, inshallah, you can look at the schedule and we'll keep to the schedule tomorrow. The last point, Ikhwan, listen up. This is very important in cooperating with each other. The people here have been very cooperative and helpful. So let's return their cooperation in kind. Please put your chairs in order and don't leave the chairs in a confused state. Everyone, please put your chair in order and don't leave your chairs in a confused state.